how to explode your wealth using promissory notes. You just need a small amount of money and you can build enormous wealth. That's what we're gonna talk about on today's show. Here we are at our very first rental property. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton. I'm Natalie. And this is a show where we help you build financial intelligence so you can build financial freedom. Now we, we buy and hold real estate. That's what we mostly talk about here on the channel. We teach you how to start your own business, buy real estate, and ultimately get out of the rat race lead of your nine to five job. But a lot of you, you know, if you're in your 30s, 40s, uh, you might not have a ton of money just yet, but you might have five, 10, $15,000 in savings. And this is the perfect video for you, right? Right, because you could invest in a promissory note, and that means now you have a performing asset. Whereas before you had, let's say $10,000 not performing, you could lend it to someone for something, for some reason that you like, and now you have that $10,000 actually performing, right? So let's talk about the mechanics of a promissory note, why you might do it, why maybe you wouldn't do it, and then how you do it more specifically. All right, so, and by the way, we should mention that we have, there's a link below this video, so you can download a promissory note and it's very easy to follow. You don't need to hire an expensive law firm. We use a company called eForms.com. Really easy, but we have a link below right to their promissory note. So it's so simple. You can download it and customize it for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about what goes into a promissory note. Okay, so it doesn't have to be that formal, although the more formal, the better, right? Because if in the occasion you need to collect on it, you need to show, hey, this was a legit thing. I wouldn't do it on a napkin or a dress no but right? you can but the but the point is you can you can there's been a lot of great contracts that have been written on the back right. of a napkin i wouldn't do that no so let's do it the right way download the template use that instead um but it's basically a document that says that i natalie promise to pay you back clayton for this amount of money and it sets out the terms so let's pretend that i want to um buy a car for $10,000, but I don't have $10,000 and I don't want to go to the bank and get a loan for $10,000. I instead go to you. Let's pretend you're my uncle. Okay. Right? Uncle Clayton. That would be weird. Uh, okay. So I say to you, Uncle Clayton, can I borrow $10,000 for my car? Now I am your star pupil niece. You believe that I am responsible. I have a good job at the ice cream shop and you know that I am going to pay you back. Okay. So your $10,000 could be sitting there doing nothing, or it could be lent to your niece, Natalie, super responsible, who will pay you back, let's say five years, interest rate, let's give me the family rate at 3%. Okay, okay. so we're gonna do five years at 3%. Right. Now, so this money that was sitting in my account was doing nothing. Remember, we always, if you gotta check out our video where we talk about Sa savers are losers, right? If you're a saver, you're a loser, unless you do it smart, unless you're buying performing assets. So now I'm converting that savings to a performing asset. Five, five years, 3% to my niece. Yes, okay. So now I'm going to take the template, I'm going to write the terms is that, Natalie, I'm gonna use my maiden name because it's weird if we use the same last name. Okay. Although we're pretending we're related anyway. Okay, okay let's say Natalie Del Conte. <laughs> is borrowing $10,000 from Clayton Morris, Uncle Clayton, on this date, right? Okay. And the payments will be this much per month because it's an interest rate of this much, right. and it starts on this day, right? So you name the parties, the borrower and the lender. You name the amount of money, how often the payments will be. You could say, pay me once a year, right? But that wouldn't be very responsible to do that for a teenager. Right. Because I'm, I'm a teenager in this Right. She works at an ice cream shop. Right. I don't um, know where she's going to be in a year. So, right, exactly. So, and you wouldn't want to say, okay, teenage niece Natalie, save up $2,000. You don't know what my monetary habits are. You know I probably could make the payments, right? right. But that's up to you. Who cares, right? And then you sign the note. Both parties have to sign the note for the note to be enforceable. 
I can't just make up a note, sign it, and be like, see, you owe me money. It so doesn't if, work that way. So if you download the promissory note example from eForms below, you'll see that, look, you can do this on your own. Definitely. Right? And if you want to go the extra step and get it notarized, you can, right? We've definitely done a note where we've gotten yeah. it notarized, but you don't have to. No, you don't. And there's usually no place on a promissory note for a notary. We've done some notes where I went ahead and and added that later. like Because a notary should not notarize a, a document that doesn't have a notarized spot. Um, and so you have to add that in. Um, for instance, we tried to get our passports notarized and they can't just like notarize a, a paper copy of it. You have to write like name, notary name, notary expert. So for instance, if you're going to do that, you have to do it properly. Okay. Um, so yeah. And then voila, you can give me that $10,000 and I should start paying. Right? So now you have a performing asset and I have a lender who I know and trust and love. So now it might not be your niece, right? So you've got $10,000 sitting in that account and you were not doing anything with it. You're just saving that money. Start to think about how you could do that to some other investors who want to use that money. There are so many people, so many people who watch this channel right now who would love to borrow that $10,000 from you. Mm -hmm. You might want to borrow it at 6%, 7% interest for five years. That 10, 20, $30,000 could be a down payment for them on a property. So you got to start thinking creatively about this. Otherwise, it's just sitting in your account doing nothing. And by the way, that promissory note can be collateralized. What does that mean? That means that you can be offering that promissory note to someone. And guess what? If they don't pay it, you they've collateralized the, the car or the house. All right. So what if you don't pay me back? Well, there's a couple of options. You mentioned collateralizing the note, right? You could take the car. You also could sell the debt to a third party because sometimes debt collectors like to buy non-performing notes because they think that, let's say, the note is for $10,000. Someone may buy it for $7,000 and then be able to like really flex their muscles and get back the $10,000. A lot of businesses like to do that, right? Um, worst comes to worst, you can go to court and sue for that and your promissory note is your documentation that that person actually owes you that money. Um, hopefully you wouldn't have to get that far because it would cost you a lot in legal fees. And most likely if the person's not paying you back, it's because they don't have it. It's not because they're being a jerk. So really think about who you're lending to, what they're gonna do with that money and whether or not you have faith in the investment and the person. Right, and the good thing about promissory notes often with a person to person relationship is that, look, it's a private deal. So you might have a five year note with somebody that they've structured. You might after a short amount of time be able to go to that person and say, look, for a less amount of money, mm -hmm. I owed you 10,000, right? Over five years, but what if I, paid you 8,000 right now and we just call it done. Yeah. And that happens all the time. You might think, why would they do that? Because guess what? To somebody, a lump sum payment is way more attractive mm -hmm. than waiting five years over the term. So right. you can't have these negotiations with a private sale. Also, we've done uh, podcasts with Susan Lasseter Lyons, who wrote the book, Getting the Money. She talks a lot about finding private lenders in your social sphere in order to do real estate deals and she teaches you that if something happens and your deal starts to go south you should be the one to broach the lender and say I need more time most likely if you have a deal let's say I lost my job and I don't think that I can pay you back for this car right but you are the lender and I come to you and I say I need more time can we extend the terms of the note for let's say six years or seven years and most of the time the lender is going to say sure that means i have this performing note for longer same thing with the real estate deal like okay you can't pay me right now you're not going to hit that balloon payment whatever you as the borrower should be if you're an un upfront person able to say okay let's come to the table and come come up with some kind of solution. So start thinking smart about your money and check out the other video that I was just talking about called being if you're a saver, you are a loser. Check out the video and we'll see you next time here everyone on the channel.